able to say thank you to the Lord for his faithfulness. Our topic tonight is even our Lord said thank you. It's a devotional study on learning to live as Jesus lived. There are many aspects to that, but we're thinking of one tonight. As it says in Philippians 2.5, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. Isaiah said that. That's how Isaiah described the beginning of the experience in which he received his commission to serve as one of God's prophets. As believers in Jesus Christ, We do well to remind ourselves that Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me. Let me say that again, John 12, 26. Whoever serves me must follow me. A fresh reading of two descriptive passages by Paul on who Jesus is will help us to see him high and exalted as the Son of God, Savior, and Lord, the one whom we are pledged to follow. The first passage is Philippians 2, 5 through 11. It's the one from which our theme text tonight comes. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The second passage is Colossians 1, 15 to, to 17. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers, or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. These two clips from the scriptures describe Jesus Christ as the creator and sustainer of all that exists, the humble Savior and the exalted Lord. We are exhorted in our theme text, Philippians 2 5, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. 
Paul is speaking of Jesus' mindset as expressed <clears throat> as expressed in verses 6 through 8, explaining his taking on human flesh, laying aside the independent use of his divine attributes, and living as a man. It is the example of his life as a man that we are to follow. Jesus' spirit of thankfulness is cited in all the Gospels. Let us identify some of those prayers of thanks, beginning with prayers of thanks for the raw materials of a miracle. The first instance we will look at is the feeding of the 5,000 in John's Gospel. John 6, 11. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. Here is Jesus, the creator and sustainer of everything, humbly giving thanks for five, <clears throat> five barley loaves and two small fish. Later, those prayers of thanks were spoken of as a memorable part of this great miracle. John 6, 23 says, Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. For some reason, when they identified the place, it had to be marked in words, reminding them that Jesus had given thanks. Here is, <coughs> Matthew tells of another mass feeding at which Jesus gave thanks. In John, or Matthew fifteen thirty six, Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, <coughs> and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. 4,000 men plus women and children were fed and ate until they were satisfied. The next, <coughs> next is a prayer of thanks for the Father's attention to his prayers. Some people may, might ask, is God really listening when you pray? Listen to Jesus. Jesus maintained a close prayer relationship with his Father. He had special places where he went to pray in solitude. But Jesus was comfortable praying anywhere, anytime. His prayer by the tomb of Lazarus reveals the confidence Jesus had in his father's attentive listening to his intimate prayers. The Bible says in John 11... 41 and 42. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people stand, standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus knew his heavenly father always heard 
and listened to his prayers. He was thankful that his prayer fellowship with the Father was a two-way experience. Another example of Jesus' thankful spirit is his prayer of thanks for the symbols of his body and blood. Luke's telling of the Last Supper and the instituting of what we call Holy Communion shows Jesus presenting the symbols of his body and blood with thanks. Watch for it as we review Luke 22, 14 to 20. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined, <coughs> reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After he took, after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I'll not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Excuse me. Jesus knew the Father had sent him into the world to give his life as the sacrifice that would bring believers salvation from, from their sin. <clears throat> he knew how that would happen. He knew the time was at hand. The bread and the cup that he held in his hands were symbols of his dying. Jesus was ready and willing for it to happen. Even though he knew it was to be ex extremely painful, he could talk with the Father and say, thank you. He was talking as a man, God's son, who had laid aside the independent use of his divine attributes. He would bear all the shame and feel all the pain without the grace of God to ease the way. Yet, Jesus knew that he had to do that to be the perfect sacrifice that was required. The bread, symbolic of his body, that would be nailed to a cross, the cup, symbolic of his blood, his life that would be poured out in love for the world. Jesus held them each in his hand, one at a time, and said, thank you. Jesus also gave thanks for concealing and revealing spiritual truth. Here Jesus used a word that is sometimes translated thank, <clears throat> thank, and sometimes praise. It is found in Matthew eleven twenty-five. 
Here are two modern translations, the English Standard Version and the New International Version that demonstrate the difference. Watch for that difference as we read first that verse from the English Standard Version. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. And the NIV, as that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little children. Vine's Expository Dictionary suggests that the Greek word as used here means I make thankful confession or I make acknowledgement with praise. Well, what it means to me is that Jesus acknowledged he was pleased, that he was pleased and thankful for the manner in which the Father revealed spiritual truth to all who came in the spirit of a child and concealed spiritual truth from those who came with a know-it-all attitude. Jesus had seen this principle at work in the lives of many people. Some concluding thoughts. Thankfulness was a deliberate part of Jesus' life. He was thankful for the common thing and for the profound things. He saw them all as coming from the Father. Paul told us in our theme text, Philippians 2, 5, to have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Being Christ-like includes being thankful. If Jesus being who he was and is, found it good to give give thanks to the Father, how much more we, being what we are, should find it good to be truly thankful to the Father. In the rules for holy living that Paul cites in Colossians 3, he included a three-word sentence. He included a three-word sentence that makes the application of the study tonight. Colossians 3, 15. A complete sentence. And be thankful. Father, Thank you for giving us the opportunity to follow Jesus. We want our lives to reflect him in every way. But we ask that you'd help us to be truly thankful and to be thankful in his name that will bring glory to him and to the Father. Father, use our lives. Make us more like Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.